Hello and welcome to this Worthy to PvMP video. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be showing you some fights that are stalemates. Uh, I'll be commenting on them briefly from time to time, but that's not really the main purpose of this video. The main purpose is to clean out these videos from my hard drive so I have space to record more interesting videos. Now actually the real reason I'm making this video and doing all this stuff is because I have an email to address. Uh, there was an email that was sent to me asking about how I do my movement and all that kind of stuff. And I, I answered the guy immediately, but I realized that it was also something I should talk about on the podcast, which I've already done, and that I should also make a video where I talk about this and show some of my things. So I've decided to throw that in here because it'll work to fill time and stuff. Uh, okay, uh, this first one, uh, I came up here and I saw Emilios beating a poor little black arrow into the dirt because uh, minstrels are OP and stuff, and so I decided that I was going to show him that there are some classes that d that does not work on. And, yeah. So we fought for a long time. There's really nothing else to say about it. At least not at this point. Okay, um, so any anyway, movement. <laughs> uh, when I move with my character, I, I use a standard setup. I use WASD and, uh, I'm going to try to get a keyboard to pop up in here if I possibly can, but I'm not totally sure if that's going to happen. Um, we'll see. But uh, I use the WASD setup, and then as you can see with my uh, key setup, uh, I've got my keys, well, my attack buttons are all 1 through 6. That's all 6 of my attack abilities, well, 5 plus Call the Shadow. And then I have Alt 1 through 4 designated for heals. Uh, Alt 5 through 9 are potions. Shift 8 through Shift Dash are the cleansing potions. My stances and auras are uh, in other spots. Uh, but uh, all of those are fairly accessible with my left hand. Now, the videos that I watched when I first was learning how to do PvP and stuff, and uh, Monster Play in particular were from a, a fellow who you may have heard of his videos and his channel. It goes by the name of Taugrim. Uh, I will have a link to Taugrim's YouTube channel in the comment section if you want to take a look at his stuff. It's very good. Uh, it's mostly from Shadows of Angmar, so it's uh, a little bit <laughs> out of date, but uh, his mechanics, fundamentals, and stuff are always solid and uh, stuff that really doesn't change and is applicable across pretty much any game, for the most part. Anyway, um, aside from the Talgrim stuff, uh, but he, he had a video where he talked about how he doesn't like WASD and he uses the EFDS. And as he was talking about that, he was talking about how um, WASD, you're pressing the keys with your your middle finger and your ring finger and your pinky, and as I, when I first heard that, I was absolutely confused, totally, completely, and utterly, just going, what? 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 You press it with, huh? What? Why is your index finger on the F key? I mean, th that's for typing. That's, that's that's not how you do WASD. And uh, I I've realized that many people seem to not re know how you actually do the WASD setup. So I'm going to tell you how this is done. In typing, you stick your hand so that you have index on F, middle finger on D, your ring finger on S, pinky on A, Thumb on spacebar. WASD setup, that is not what you do. You move your fingers to the left. One space. Index is on D. Middle is on S. Your ring finger is on A. Then you take your middle finger, move it up to W. Middle finger on W. Ring finger on A. Index on D. Your pinky finger, instead of being on caps lock, move it down to shift. Thumb, keep it on spacebar. With your hand like this, you are able to very easily control your character's movement. You can use the space bar to jump and stuff. I, I learned this playing... Oh, what was I playing? Oni, first uh, third-person tactical type shooter and also close combat mix game ever. And by Bungie Studios, not one of the odds of that. Uh, but uh, th that's where I learned to do it. And it works really great for first-person shooters, third-person shooters, that kind of stuff. Because it lets you map spacebar as your jump key, map shift as your crouch, uh, you can stick tab or whatever as use button, and you've got really easy access to all of that. You can keep on moving and hit all these 
uh, extra utility keys to enhance your ability to move around and all that stuff and keep yourself going. And it works fantastically. Well, in Lotro, it also works very similarly. Now, you don't really need to use the spacebar for much. Uh, there are occasionally times when it comes in handy, there are places where you want to jump, mostly to take advantage of terrain. Uh, some of you will probably bounce on top. <laughs> Cut that. But, the pinky finger being over by the shift key, and on it, and right above the control key, that's what is really important, because that means that you have quick and easy access to multiple rows of buttons. Now, the alt key, which uh, accesses my second row, as you can see where all my heels and stuff are, to get to that, I use my thumb. Because you just move your thumb over to the left, and right off the space where it hits the alt, then you're right there, so I have my regular buttons are all my attacks. I move my thumb and hit alt, I'm on my heels. I hit shift, then I can hit my stance chains or uh, potions or on different characters. I have other things mapped on the shift keys. I, I can move it down and hit control if I want to do something like hit my brands, put down command post, uh, hit buffs, hit res, stuff like that. I have got easy access to pretty much everything that I would want to be able to hit with a jet mere keystrokes. Um, some of the other stuff like delving bo buff potions, like I suppose they're just buff potions now that the delving's gone, but those uh, that are only used out of combat and you're gonna apply and keep on for a long time, or food, uh, th those don't need to be mapped to a quick key the way that potions and other stuff do, so they're not. With this whole setup though, uh, I can keep my fingers on WASD, and sure, I don't have quite as many number keys in easy reach as I would with, say, an EFDS setup, but with the EFDS setup, you can't reach the shift key and the control key nearly as conveniently. Uh, with WASD, it's always resting there. It's instantly pressed. You don't have to move your finger to get there. It rests there naturally, and it's just a quick little contraction of your muscles while relaxing a couple others and the key is pressed. It's very simple and it gives me access to actually more keys because of how easily I can get to these extra button rows because of where my hand sits and so that's what I do with that. Now then, as far as actually moving, uh, obviously I do not merely keyboard turn or anything like that. Uh, I use my mouse for a whole lot. Typically what I'm doing when I'm moving is I am using a combination of my keys for movement, uh, occasionally using one of the strafe keys directly, and then I'm using my mouse. Typically I have my mouse held down with the right mouse button so that I continue to adjust my movements and such, and also while I'm doing that, uh, that makes it so that if you use the A or the D key, they function just as if you're strafing. Uh, I could use the Q or the E keys and just strafe regularly, but I typically don't because I like uh, keeping my mouse and uh, controlling my movement very tightly the way that it allows me to. Uh, right there I went ahead and hit the Quitters Never Win just because I wanted power. There, I did not need to use that heal, I wanted the power from it. Also notice that I am stopping and typing out messages because I know he's not going to kill me in a sudden burst of damage or anything. It's been going on way too long for that. But uh, I also know that, unfortunately, because he is making good use of his power return skill and also power pots, he's not going to run out. If he wasn't use making good use of that, I could potentially kill this minstrel. But he is. Also notice that he keeps on using his bubble every time he can or uh, whenever he it's a little bit lower on morale, and whenever that bubble goes up, his morale goes right back up to full, so any leeway that I've made into his morale bar uh, gets taken away right then. So it, it is a pure stalemate, there's nothing else to it. Uh, anyway, back to my movement stuff. Let's pop up our keyboard again. <laughs> right, uh, so. I use a combination. Uh, one thing that it allows me to do that I do take advantage of quite a bit is I'm able to hold down the right mouse button, use my strafing uh, with the A or D keys, and it allows me to strafe right away and cut really sharp angles because I can turn my character and flip him right around and start cutting back the other way and it allows me to maintain facing uh, towards my opponents so that I get my blocks and parries while continuing to 
move at strafe speeds instead of the walking backwards speed. And it'll also keep me moving in the correct direction towards friendly lines, friendly NPCs, cover, whatever it is I'm trying to strafe kite towards. So that's uh, one of the great advantages that comes with that. Now, the other thing that that really helps with is when I get on top of people and start doing a lot of melee damage, uh, it lets me flip around and keep right on top of them, right on their backs. Uh, I do a lot of the stuff that I learned from watching Talgrim's videos where I try to keep on top of people's backs as much as I possibly can. And you do that for a variety of reasons. The biggest and most important reason is because it means that they cannot hit you and they cannot get any blocks or parries. Now the cannot hit you thing, that's not entirely true with the way that many of the classes in Lotro, Freepside only, have been buffed uh, and, well these buffs are um, only slightly absurd, uh, but for instance minstrels, if I get right behind a minstrel and the minstrel is facing the other direction, they can still shoot their abilities off and hit you. Uh, really not a very well thought out plan as far as game mechanics go. I, I really don't like that. But, you know, it is what it is. I can't change it because I'm not the developer. But I really wish they would fix some of that stuff that's going on. It would definitely make it a lot easier to deal with some of the classes and players and players that are taking advantage of advantage of classes that have become flavors of the month or <clears throat> the flavor of the game rune keepers but you know, we all know that that's not going to happen anytime soon I mean come on they still haven't fixed our mitigations uh, other stuff about movement let's see um, when you're moving uh, one thing that you may want to do is try to run so that you go right past your opponent, circling around them, and keep yourself facing in towards them. Uh, this is especially important if you are, find that you have trouble because of your internet connection or anything like that, with uh, your skills occasionally not triggering uh, when you need them to, and you just miss the timing slightly on when it's supposed to activate. Uh, if you are running towards your opponent or running right by them and you stay facing them and keep yourself in range and actually facing the correct direction for about one full second before you go by them again that's typically enough time to fire it off no matter what uh, if your connection is still having issues and can't get it off at that speed then honestly your internet connection is causing you much bigger problems than that and you probably aren't going to be able to do much of anything about that uh, you're probably going to get killed uh, or be ineffective as a member of your raids small group warband whatever it is you're doing also doing the whole circle thing is uh, an important skill to have when trying to stay behind your opponents and actually get damage on them without them getting their avoidances and stuff because that's what a large part of it is is they try to turn to get themselves facing back towards you and you keep moving around them uh, the other thing I do especially against mouse turners is many times you want to be uh, not just doing circles around them but also actually running into them and going straight to their character model because there's no character collision and flip yourself around with your mouse instantly as you walk through their character so that you can instantly take a shot right into their back uh, especially if you're dealing with guardians I, I do that sometimes where they've hit pledge I turn off my auto attacks I run right into them flip around and hit a uh, fracture and take a shot at their rear arc just because it's a 50-50 chance of actually landing with the evade bonus and if they do evade it they don't get any reactive off of that and then I turn off my auto attacks again and maybe try once more uh, also works wonderfully for actually gaining some distance on them which is uh, another trick that I use sometimes I think I've mentioned this in other videos but one of the tricks that I will use is I will double back through people and just you know I'll be kiting along and slowly circling, keeping them in front of me, and say I'm kiting towards the right. Then all of a sudden I'll flip and run left, go through their character model, stop moving, turn to face them, mash my heal button, start that induction, they keep running the other way, then they finally turn around to come back, 
fuel's already gone off, especially with that minus 25% induction time when you're in commander stance. It can work wonders. But, as I said, I think I've already mentioned that. Man, this fight's really going nowhere. I hope I call it soon. I, I remember I do call it a draw eventually. Aye, aye. Come on, come on. Alright, looks like there's not a whole lot more of, of this particular fight to go. Uh, we're just standing here and smacking each other in the face. <laughs> Truly the height of combat and tactics, so wouldn't you agree? Now there hasn't been a whole lot of examples of you know, movement and particularly meleeing uh, for this particular video. There are, there are a couple instances that have cropped up, but really not a whole lot. Mostly because he's a tactical class and he's been trying to do his whole kite thing. Now the whole kite idea, uh, really not working out for him. Uh, honestly, if he wanted to get a good chance of killing me, he should have been taking advantage of movement because I've got to stand still for all these induction heals. And he should have been getting into melee range to also take advantage of the fact that he's going to get melee auto attacks off. Trying to get on my rear arc and put damage on me with his auto attacks in addition to his other stuff to see if that could possibly allow him to actually get me. Also those auto attacks would have helped with slowing down my inductions by giving extra knockbacks. But instead he's trying to maintain his distance and it really just doesn't work for him. It just doesn't do enough damage. Alright, here we go, we got a warden now. Now, uh, this particular warden, well, I found him because someone mentioned that they got jumped by a warden when they were up near Gullivel. So I came looking for him, and you know, this is my first warden after the wardens got their big updates with during update 6. And uh, so I decided that I wanted to take a look at what was going to happen. So this guy is going to be a much better example of how you actually do all this meleeing and moving around, going for positional, uh, making attacks as you get into positional range, and just pay attention to that as I continue to talk about other things. Also notice I'm actually stopping and typing out messages. Again. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I do want to point out is I am in Brawler Stance with R of Command, typing out messages, and he is in the Warden's uh, damage mode. It's the uh, Recklessness. That's the stance. Recklessness. Uh, but I believe he has traded up for shield line. And his plan of battle seems to be I will stand around uh, using minimal power consumption or something. Or maybe it's just that wardens uh, don't actually have abilities that use power anymore. Who knows? I, I don't even know anymore. I, I, I certainly have no idea based off his power level consumptions and such. But uh, his plan seems to be make the other guy attack me and attack me and use heals as necessary and then I will stay, be alive and he'll be out of power and I will kill him. Um, I hate to break the news to you buddy, but uh, that's how I used to kill wardens, I would run them out of power. Of course that doesn't work anymore because Dark Before the Dawn is available all the time. And also notice his power bar has not moved at all. Uh, could just be because of the internet connection I'm on and it's not showing up, but I, I don't think so. I, I I just find it very suspicious. Uh, yeah, the one weakness Warden's had, that you could actually run them out of power, completely taken away. Power bar doesn't even move anymore. What can you say? Obviously they were really in dire need of a lot of help in many areas. <sighs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're both in our, our damage stances. And we both tank each other up and never make any serious headway on the other person from our damage modes. Which just goes to show you that for some classes the damage stance just doesn't work. There's not enough trade-off in survivability or there's not enough gain in actual damage output. Um, for War Leader it's the latter, for the Wardens it's the former. Warriors do get quite a trade-off in survivability when they go into Brawler's stance. They, they gain many things, but there is quite a trade-off. And the Wardens, they just don't get enough uh, drawbacks in their damage stance. Oh look, he's down 500 power. It has moved. It's amazing. 
Uh, but yeah, th that's all that's gonna happen. Uh, how this fight ends, uh, I will get tired of fighting him eventually. And when that happens, uh, I'm faced with a choice. I can either type into my flag and offer to call it a draw, or I can call for reinforcements in OOC. Now in this particular fight, I elect to call for reinforcements in OOC. The reason I do that is because I know that if I leave him here, he's going to keep camping on Golival and trying to kill any greenies and stuff that are coming by. And he's already killed one guy before. I hate it when people are camping on places for waiting for my greenies. I look after the people in my faction. That is why I called him out and got him killed, so that he would not be standing here hunting for greenies. And that is the only reason that I did that. Otherwise, I would have let him go. But greenies first. That's also the only reason I ever call out soloers, really, is if they are in a area that is heavily trafficked by new guys, or where the new guys are likely to go, something like that, then I will call those people out, uh, not giving an exact location, but I'll call them out as a warning to people, don't go to this place because there's a ganker nearby. I also, as a secondary reason, hope that, you know, if someone is looking for some solo fights, and I tell them, you know, this guy is somewhere in this area, maybe they'll go out there and they'll look for a solo fight and actually get one and both people will benefit from it. So that's why I do that. Those are my particular reasons. Uh, you can have your own, and uh, take it or leave it, that's just fine. Anyway, back to movement stuff. Uh, yes. What was I going to say about movements? Uh, oh, I remember. Uh, doing the circles. There is one other method that I use for circling around my opponents. Uh, I do not use this method nearly as often as I do mouse turning and simply holding down A or D. But this is something I, that I did learn from Calgrim watching his videos. If you hold down the D and the Q key, or the A and the E key, uh, or if you're using the EFDS setup, it's SR and FW, you will circle in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction while your character continues to turn inwards. This means that your character is strafing the one direction, turning the opposite way, and they run in a circle facing in. This allows you to, using your keyboard only, uh, move in a very tight circle and uh, keep on top of your opponents and keep moving towards their back. Uh, this works fantastic if they are trying to keyboard turn. If they're trying to mouse turn, uh, it still works fairly effectively, but it's not nearly as effective as going through the character models and flipping back around is. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention about this fight with Fortuno is I found out later that <laughs> when I started getting lower on health, uh, which I do at several points, what I should have done at that point is I should have started trying to kite him because he needs to get into melee range to get off his shield abilities uh, or shield gambit builders to actually get any of his seals done. If I can keep him at a distance, wear him out with shouts after I've got a, say, a 3000 morale gone from his bar, then I could potentially kill him. Uh, it's not likely to work out that way because he'll probably just hit hampering javelin and then catch up and do his shield gambits anyway, but it is at least worth a shot. On the other hand, I could always go to the Lotro store, buy those in-combat run speed boosts, and then when he hits me with Hampering Javelin, I'll pop one of those things and he still won't catch me. Uh, but, you know, that's something to try out another time with another Warden. Also, I have to say, you know, notice, um, I do see the major difference between the heavy armor and the medium armor classes, whereas that used to not really exist back in Mirkwood. Uh, with this guy, I can get crits in the 600 range and such with my various shouts, so sometimes even higher depending on if he's debuffed or not, which one I'm using, how hard it crits, etc, etc. But with a heavy armor class, like say a guardian or a champion, uh, it's very hard to break four, four or five hundred even with a, a crit with black speech. Uh, it just doesn't work very well. Of course, when he heals 457 morale per tick with that one heal, I mean, what's it matter that you've managed to put 600 on with one shout that has a 10 second cooldown, right? 
Ah, there I go. I'm already calling him out. Hmm. Notice he's uh, he's trying very, very hard to do damage on me. Took him a while to actually get behind, but he is finally behind me and taking advantage of the no blocks or parries from behind. Uh, so I'm glad that he at least tried to do that, but notice he was very slow with that when he was actually going about it. Also, I think that I'm going to probably consider popping off uh, quitters or get a grip just to make up for the health deficit I've currently got. Uh, notice I'm using that double tap again. I actually, I'm making it into a triple tap as he gets his interrupts and stuff off. Uh, yeah, wasn't that just beautiful? War Leader's sitting there tanking all his damage, and he's trying desperately to get off his interrupts, and he can't stop the induction. It's just wonderful. Right, well, this fight should be wrapping up very shortly. I believe that we're going to have a Black Arrow or a Ward coming by fairly soon here. I'm just wondering where they are. Maybe it takes them a little bit longer to get here. I don't know. Uh, I believe I've talked about everything I have to say regarding the stalemates and such. Alright, fighting, fighting, fighting. I'm gonna just play some music. <laughs> See how this thing goes. Defiler! We got a Defiler finally showed up. Ah, Bubkiss, my good friend Bubkiss. Spiders are the arch enemy of Wardens. Especially in these days, Wardens don't have an effective continual slow that they can keep up on the spiders, and spiders move fast naturally. Now what he's doing right now is he's trying to be a jerk and take away from our potential infamy commendations and stuff by pulling all the NPCs he can on himself. Uh, yeah, real classy move there. Not that I could say that I was particularly classy in calling him out or anything, but I already gave my reasons for why I did that, and I I will stand by them. Well, that's all for this fight. I, there was really nothing to, uh, to gain from those videos, except just seeing how movement goes and all of that. Well, hope you learned something with uh, me talking about movement and showing you pictures of keyboards and stuff. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.